What up, it's Josh, your boy IBS Kelso, and this is my 1,000 hours of MX bikes, and I'm going to be bringing you guys 10 tips, and yeah, man, 1,000 hours is a lot, dude. I got to say, first off and foremost, uh, I never expected to see myself get to 1,000 hours playing this game, but MX bikes is a simulating dirt bike game. It's not an arcade. It's not like ATV at Legends Reflex. Like, this is a challenge every day, man. I think this is why I do come back to this game every day just because of the grind you know i i can't ever say that i'm the best player ever or best rider ever every time i get on this game so i always like to work on the craft i always like to see myself improve and this is kind of like 10 tips that i've been picking up or want to give to you guys it's kind of just been help helping me in my own gameplay and see myself improve every day so i hope you guys uh, enjoy the video and yeah hit that like button subscribe button and i do appreciate it we're on the road to 5,000 subs and um yeah you guys are absolutely amazing so thank you guys for all the support to my thousand hour journey and uh, we'll get right into it but my first tip is uh map knowledge or feeling comfortable um i'm here at hunter lawrence compound or you know jet and all that Ooh, that's i <laughs> under jump i'm here at my uh thousand hour or hunter lawrence and i gotta say for my first tip would definitely be map knowledge and comfortability i shouldn't say i'm super um, comfortable on this track nor does my map knowledge feel really like there but that's why i thought i'd choose this track because it actually is a very great track to actually learn and pick up to the best of your ability especially when you really want to focus and put down laps and get better like the sand sections and corners so i definitely recommend um you know finding map knowledge and, and learning because if you can like literally get on a track to where you don't know anything about and you can try to pick up map knowledge and you know feeling comfortable on a bike on a, on a track you, you kind of get into this habit of being able to get on whatever other track you want to and and really perform so i have a good amount of hours on here not the best and i'm also on a 450 i usually i'm on, on a 250 but i thought i'd show off the hsm thank you so much for giving me this amazing graphics kit for the ktm 450 um but yeah with that being said we're going to tip two real quick and uh tip two kind of just goes off with um, map knowledge and comfortability feels um is corner anticipation and, and setting yourself up for that corner and really knowing where the map is you kind of can help yourself up set yourself up for the next corner or next section i should say and um yeah so that's just where it goes off like i'm i think the power is just kind of getting me to right now as i'm riding a 450 which i always need practice and you know this is a tough cookie to crack but it's very fun see like even there i could have been scrubbing a little bit harder but yeah corner anticipation and map knowledge kind of goes two and two you will see yourself picking up way more time when you get down the track more and more to be able to set yourself up for the next section which is really great you know just not knowing where you are on the on the track really just kind of hinders your time so really work on map knowledge being comfortable at the end of the day i feel like i'm out of my uncomfortability right now right now riding this 450 which is okay because you know it's going to help me get comfortable so something you really want to work on next thing i could say for sure would be never going first gear I know a lot of i know i know a lot of people start out and they think that you're going to get the most torque the most drive going back into first gear getting into the corners that is not how things work here i'm going to keep it a buck 50 with you i've seen a lot of friends uh i'm just going to point it out smokester <laughs> my dude smokester man if you guys haven't checked him out bro w content creator but smokester does this a lot to where he'll literally go all the way back down the first gear and stay in first gear and not even know first gear is literally hurting you like you 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 have like, you already have your rpms up so high there's no reason to go back into first gear because you're literally messing yourself up you know rpms are already rolling you already have enough you know power to the back wheel to keep you pushing so don't go to first gear you're, you're literally having to go down then re-click back up to get that speed just stay in second best you can do unless you're playing a little bit of supercross and you go down and all that and you know you're hitting something you got to stay in first that's where you're going to get the most torque to the back wheel so that's the only time I definitely recommend to go in the first gears if you fall. But if you're literally just riding like this, corner anticipation, setting yourself up, and never going back in the first gear, it is just, I don't know. It's just not it. It's personally what I've I've learned for myself. And I have to thank Cam, probably the fastest rider in the game right now. I have to thank him so much for literally just telling me that. I literally had the same problem myself until he saw me at about 600 hours. And he was like, yo, you got to stay out of first gear, man. That's what's messing you up. So yeah um next after that is corner speed you know do like you need to be either braking before the corner or not braking at all trust your engine braking um and if you over j or anything like what i just did that's when you can hit a little bit on the brake but you don't want to touch any of the brake here trust your bike trust your lean 
which I kind of just front tucked. That was definitely kind of me just not getting into the rut correctly, but trust your lean, trust your bike, and knowing that, you know, you don't have to stay up on that, on that brake, man. It's good to have the brake there. You don't want to unbind it and never do that because it will mess you up in the long run. But for the most part right here, I don't even need to press the brake. Just let off the throttle a little bit and then keep all that momentum through there. And that like also goes to show like right here, I just got to slow down just a bit, which I probably could have slowed down some more. But if you're just coming in too fast, like let it happen. But right here, not even on the gas, not even on the brake, I should say. And then yeah, it just comes back to kind of the five tips or everything I've been kind of talking about. Comfortability, uh, map knowledge, corner anticipation, corner speeds. Oh, and also stand up more. Like if you're not going through a corner, stand up. But when you're going through that corner, like stand, sit down like late. Like as soon as you get into the corner, sit down. But you want to stand up way more, especially over sand. Um, I guess I'll throw in a bonus tip. If you guys are not riding sand tracks, you need to be riding sand tracks. Like 100% be riding sand tracks. Sand tracks help with corner anticipation, setting yourself up for the next, for the next track, for the next corner, for the next corner speed. Sand, 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 sand things like help you out. I'm sorry, I feel like I just butchered that, but sand will definitely help you out in the longest run ever to help you out. Like understanding, like okay, like I want to keep all my momentum. I want to keep all my speed. <laughs> and I feel like I'm just giving more than five tips. I felt like I knew I was gonna say five tips, but as things keep coming to mind, I'm just gonna keep coming it out. But bringing it out. Wait, pause. Um, yeah. That's that's the hugest thing, man, is keeping your momentum and and learning where to stay fast in sand sections. So if you already know how to ride sand since it slows you down, I promise you, man, you're, you're going to see so much more improvement on regular dirt tracks. So take that with a grain of salt. Once again, comfortability, understanding how to approach everything, stand up throughout all this, slow down, hit the braking bumps just a bit. Boom. Never went down the first. Never had to. Barely had to press the brake. Maybe just a little bit, you know, get it. Do it again here nothing trust your bike being able to keep the rpms up and uh you know keep your bike moving once again i am on a on a 450 so i feel like i'm not necessarily cheating but i have a little bit more power to the back wheel but here again don't even have to let go of anything just boom just boom understand where you're at slow her down you can even take this outside boom take this outside just be be gentle on that throttle man it's gonna it's gonna be huge it's gonna be detrimental for you um i think i'm gonna head to forest real quick because i really want to show you guys there especially for you new beginners of uh kind of what i mean especially if this is like since this is a paid track um it's like four dollars on the track on, on there so this is probably something to where like as you get more up in there this is something really to practice a really good track jv is just a goat uh, let's head over the forest and i'll show you corner anticipation and corner speed there since that's going to be a lot of your guys practice for anybody that's trying to pick up this you know game for the very first time it's where you're going to spend a lot of time so let's head over there did not know i had did not have my uh controller overlay on not gonna lie my bad pimps but with that being said now you can kind of see like just just how much throttle i'm really giving especially this being a 450 with a 250 you could probably rail that corner what i was talking about but you know you got to be a little bit more gentle but that's like kind of where if you get on a 450 you learn more throttle control because you have to be more gentle but map knowledge as well being able to know that like how this how this goes you have to stay close nice and close without hitting that holy cow and you can cut down right here as well a little bit of break that way you're not kind of front tucking but yeah, like I said, man, it's 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 huge. Like I, I feel like I'm just gonna be a broken record at this time, but put in as much laps as you can and kind of go off those tips. I feel like I'm just like rambling on, but if you can really understand being comfortable, map knowledge, uh, standing up more, don't getting never get into first gear, <laughs> and corner speed. Corner speed is gonna be your biggest friend right now. Like literally, no break, no break brake would have slowed me down completely i let the bike do its thing i let it slow down on its own and i kept my momentum that is huge right here brake so i can actually get a turn and corner and that's something you'll probably have to mess with you're probably going to mess up a lot about it uh doing that but yeah i mean at the end of the day it's it's trial and error you know depending on everybody's skill man but I, I i'm not the fastest rider but i know that i have been progressing and i felt like this is a deserved video for your not just a thousand hours, but to give you the best tips I can give you to where like what I've been doing in motocross. So, yeah, I don't know, just rip and grip right now. I don't, <laughs> I'm not even the fastest guy around this, but it's about literally hitting your same exact lines, being consistent. 
It's not about hitting the burners. It's about being consistent. And when you hit the same lines, that's where the consistency comes. And if you hit the same lines, then you're just, you're going to be so used to it. You're just going to keep gaining speed through it. So if you keep gaining speed through through like lines that you've already hit, you're, you're, you're going to be way faster than someone that's trying to just hit a burner and don't know their lines. So just think about that. It's just, you know, repetition, 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 you know, cut down even more. Had a bad freaking angle, but all it is man so yeah hope you guys enjoy those tips uh <laughs> hope you guys enjoy those tips let's go to the supercross side of it all right ladies and gentlemen i was able to get into hsm's uh daddy and kind of just ride around and i felt like it was very hard for me to understand to explain to you what i was trying to like what my five tips are so i thought i'd ride the actual track and explain it while practice is going on for the next six minutes or so if i can get it down in less than that time but Biggest thing, what I have is map knowledge for you guys. We're here at Anaheim 1, 2024. But my thing is is reading a section and knowing map knowledge. Just like out of motocross, you need to understand like where you are at all times on a supercross track. Because if you don't, then you're kind of like just going, you're butchering a section. And it's all about speed and consistency on supercross. So my best thing is, is, is map knowledge and reading a section to understand where you are. Um, learning how to hit that section will come over time, especially for nobody that's like really learning Supercross. And Supercross is probably the most hardest thing to get down in this game. It's probably the pinnacle of like, you know, you've done everything like MXGP, Motocross. Now it's time to actually work on your consistency skills and all that. Yeah, you come to Supercross. So with that being said, you also want to do corner speed. You want to keep you, you, you want to bring that corner speed from outdoors to it to indoors. Corner speed is literally how you're going to keep up your fast times and all that. Um, corner anticipation is the same thing. You know, making sure you're hitting corners right. Not staying on that brake. Brake will not be your friend, man. Do not slow down. Let the bike do its thing. Right here, no brake. Just letting off the gas a bit, starting it back up. No first gear as well, guys. Like, this is, these are simple um, tips that I was giving in motocross that kind of carry over. But uh, other tips that I need to bring is uh, momentum, carrying momentum. You need to keep you need to keep all that momentum breaking and not carrying momentum is what's going to like literally tear you down in mx bikes especially in supercross so carrying momentum is the biggest thing and to keep up as much speed as you can you do not want to slow down like right here you probably going up that ball turn you don't want to go mach 10 you probably do want to press the brake because you will get a a you know front tuck um, but another thing is knowing when to sit and stand knowing when to scrub knowing when to uh seat bounce for who's don't know what scrubbing is it's basically like right off the right off the jump you kind of want to sit down like right before you go up the jump you want to sit down that's going to keep you lower in the air that is what a scrub is like right here you want to scrub 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 again it's going to keep you all low you you don't want to bone air and you don't want to take too much time in the air because it's basically slowing you down to the best of your ability another thing is seat bouncing uh seat bouncing is a very weird thing to kind of cover and understand but it's basically when you're in the air and you know you're about to uh how should i say you know you're about to like case or you're not gonna be able to get over a jump seat bouncing is where you s you're standing but you sit down in mid middle of the air at the top is at the peak of your jump so i so like right here T peak St sit down i mean sit down what's happening is that the bike is coming to you you're not going to the bike you're bringing the bike up to you and you're positioning your body from the back of the bike to the front of the bike um and you're bringing it to you i promise you you'll see it like you just seat bounce and it's kind of very weird to understand but try it out for yourself to where you're in midair speed standing and then just literally how see how like the the bike moves on you like i'll, I'll just go in boner air for you real quick you can see like literally how the bike moves like right here you see how i'm moving my butt to it like my legs move to the front of the bike that's seat bouncing and seat bounce is going to help you get over stuff that you don't think you're going to be able to clear so kind of understanding like kind of understanding when to use that and when no it's kind of situational awareness and it comes over time you're not going to learn it overnight and me saying it you're going to practice it and you're going to be like dude i don't know what you're talking about kelso that is unfortunate you're, you're going to be like i don't know what you're talking about kelso i'm going to keep it a buck and I, I just can't help you with it so you're going to have to you're going to have to just like take my word for it and understand like right here seat bounce brought the bike up to me seat bounce brought the bike up to me and instead of me casing all that you know i'm bringing the bike up to me um another thing is true yeesh i don't even know oh whoops whoops yeah so when we get back to the whoops yeah i'll just go over there right now whoops how to enter the whoops and all that your best friend is 
is having a good setup at the end of the day. I don't care what nobody says, having a good setup because these bikes stock sometimes just doesn't get it done. Sometimes just doesn't get it done. So understanding how to get into your whoops is, is a good setup, but also having a good technique. Um, there's multiple ways. What I found is literally sitting down, standing, sitting down, sitting, standing again, and it's gonna get you lower through here. Um, same thing here if you don't really have, know how to do that just stand up the whole time make sure you enter in second gear then push up to third um like maybe after the second whoop you'll see that you're kind of connecting pretty well but you want to make sure your front wheel literally touches every whoop if your front wheel is not going to touch every whoop you're kind of in the wrong you're messing up and you're going to see the bike kind of get really squirrely on you so you got to make sure that you're uh got to make sure that every every wheel's touching and then really adjust your analog stick a lot of people say just lean completely back and the whoops the whole time and let the bike do its work but that's technically how things not like that's technically not how things always work out sometimes you just have to adjust sometimes you got to fix yourself in the whoops because it's just going to be that and that dragon's back right there is another thing you want to make sure your wheel touches that last i guess i'll go back over the dragon's back i guess knowing that there's a dragon's back here is actually really good for gameplay and kind of you know showing you as much as i can in supercross but being able to being able to get into a, a section not oj which i just did but i'm trying to show more of the whoops here is boom corner speed bang sit back then third gear and then adjust you see how my bike's bouncing up and down on my analog stick i'm pulling back and forth depending on how the bike is like boom bang bang backing up up and down up and down up and down really just gotta adjust sometimes it's like the fastest run through the whoops you don't even need to adjust you don't even need to touch your analog stick but i found that if i keep going up and down it, it, it's what helps a lot so yeah take that with a grain of salt hopefully that helps you out um and then dragon's backs i know they're probably the hardest thing to really conquer and understand it also took me a very long time to to kind of get on them but now like i'm hitting them with with ease so best thing i could show you here is uh best thing i show you here is um Ooh, ooh, I did not want to run to you guys. Sorry about that. But just being able to stand up, lean back, boom, 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 and let that your front wheel touch the very last one. That's the best advice I can give you guys. Um, this race is about to start, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a race to where I put it all together, and kind of hopefully you guys can take my word for it. So, yeah, this is MX Bikes, guys. If you guys stuck this long and you guys haven't picked up this game, definitely worth it. Um, it's an indie game at the end of the day. It's best simulator, I would say, out there. I mean, you got to work with what you got. But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hit that like button, subscribe button once again, man. I do appreciate you guys. And, yeah, I'll see you guys when the gate drops. Yeah, man, Husqvarna 250. I felt like I've been really practicing, and I really wanted to show more in this 1K hour vid of my last 250 to 300 hours of actually putting down Supercross time. Um, so, yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for just sticking to the end of this video. And we got some pretty fast people in here um so we're gonna see what's up see how far i can do i think i have some pretty good consistency on here i think my goal right now is maybe not first place since we have some 450s in here but at least a top 10 so yeah we'll focus up i'll kind of explain if i can and talk um when i can i think right now for starting these these bikes have a good amount of traction so you don't need to lean forward you don't need to lean back kind of just push up on the gate get ready for it and um yeah appreciate you guys let's go Let's hug that front. Oh, wow. W, Husqvarna. Also, MX bike starts are not the best. Net code gets really, <laughs> really into it for anybody that's out there. It's just, you know, not really understanding if you've ever seen a start. But net code really does, a take, does take a toll and does take effect um, hugely in some of these starts. But you got to work with what you can and just understand that you'll get through it. You're probably going to fall so many more times. I should have took down... Oh, can I make it through that? Let's go. Being patient as well, man. I think that's the biggest thing that I keep struggling on sometimes is I, look, like right now, I have a lead. I have a good lead. I don't need to push for first. I just need to either see they're going to make a mistake or, you know, just literally run my race, you know? Just basically reap what I sow and say, if I if we need to work on consistency, corner speed and all that, let's do it, man. Like, we have a good lead right now. We're probably in third place. Why not? Why tarnish it? So... Get some good whoops. There we go. Like I said, you see, you see how I'm adjusting through it. 
you know i'm trying my best to just adjust as it goes on because it's it's split second through the whoops you know you really can't tell until unless you're really in them and that's what's going to really help you out so see i'm seat bouncing as well i thought i was gonna i came up just a little short i seat bounced and i was able to clear it just simple things like that's what's really going to help you i feel like you know a lot of people don't like teach a lot of that or kind of explain it to you so i'm trying to explain like as i ride like what's my analysis and how i'm like breaking down same thing stand up s lean back and then try to skim or touch that touch that last dragon's back so scrub standing sitting down right before the uh end sitting down stay low don't even need to seat bounce just a bit so i can get right over it and we're good scrub again Once again, like, I don't need the pressure. I'm in third place. I've got a good spot. He crashes or goes over anyway. I almost go over. Can we still hit the triple? We can. It's just about taking our time, baby. Just about taking our time. Like, right now is the biggest thing is, like, I have a good second, like, good lead on fourth. What, maybe, like, six seconds or so? So I need to capitalize off of that. And just, you know, run, run my race. No need, no need to go super ham and the paint off of it. Sit back. Third gear. Go ahead and cut down. First gear. The only reason I'm going in first gear is because I want to do the uh, engine braking. I want to do engine braking so I can get real close and then I go back into second because I already carrying so much momentum. I'm going to have more power to the back wheel no matter what because the RPMs. Stand up. Back wheel. There we go. Get onto the table. Probably a little case. Like I said, adjusting, adjusting as it is. Sometimes you can see it, and like as knowledge goes on, you can see you can just hold it back, hold it back, and you're chilling like a villain. Cut down, scrub, scrub, stand up, scrub. Right, and if for those who are already forgetting what scrub means, it's just sitting down right before you get off the edge of the edge of the. Uh, the lip the lip of the jump so now that's 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 second place right there uh, whoever's on that honda i don't know if that's a 450 honda or not but for me to be in second place the two 450s i mean third place the two 450s i'll take it you know for a thousand hours i've really been putting that work for the last 300 hours for supercross so all it takes is just a grind dedication man Just a little bit of break so I don't go over the berm and or uh, swash out my, my front. Just kind of like situational awareness and like, you know, kind of practice of knowing that like I've been in that situation before to where I literally could wash out the front. So I just go and check up with a little bit of break. Whoop speed's great. Let's go again. All right, lapper. Now, he probably doesn't understand lapping. You will get a blue flag. You, you do get a blue flag when you're being lapped, but more than anything, a lot of people don't respect the blue flag. It's almost like they don't understand what a blue flag is, but blue flag basically means that a leader is right behind you. He's not gonna care. Look at that. Like I said, he doesn't care at all. He's gonna go with it. And I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna take my time through here. I don't need to, I don't need to mess up. He's going to mess up more than anything. That's why he's in 17th place. So you just got to respect it. You got to do situational awareness, map knowledge, and understand, you know, he was looking for the takeout. He was looking for the BS. So just let him run his race. I already had the freaking 20. I already had like, you know, 15 seconds on the next person. So just kind of take it with a grain of salt and be like, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to play like that, ride like that, I'll just wait for you to crash it. I mean, you're in 17th place for a reason. So fine with me not even mad at you but you know just respect the blue flag but nothing i can really do looks like gab and the 450 kind of just tore off they were probably definitely hitting all 450 lines as i was hitting my 250 lines um this just you know i'm still an amateur this got i got a lot of work to do we got more lap riders coming into effect we got j-lo he's respecting the blue flag i do appreciate that Come up here, cut down.
Easy peasy. Off of 450s, uh, eight second behind, I, I would take that. I'm not gonna lie. Getting getting eight seconds behind two, two 250, I mean 450s on a 250, I'll take that. Thank you guys so much, man. This was my 1,000 hour video. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. I'm sorry if I'm not the best teacher, but I thought that I could give you the best insight of like everything that I've learned so far in 1,000 hours. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's your boy, IBS Kelson. I'll catch you all on the absolute next one. Pa, 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 p